I'd like to introduce Brendan Meller. He's going to talk to us about navigating our HR careers using LinkedIn. We're going to have fun in here today, guys. I'm probably one of the very few times that you'll be at a presentation and the presenter comes out in a um, pink feather bow and a cowboy hat. So this is kind of the, the kickoff to the fun we're going to have in here today, talking about uh, leveraging our LinkedIn as we go throughout our HR career. So let me just pull my slide deck up here and some little um, teasers kind of rolling through as you were getting in your seats here today. All right, so we're navigating our career using uh, LinkedIn. And I would encourage you, I want this to be a hands-on session here today. If you have your phone with you, bring your LinkedIn app up. If you have your laptop with you, go ahead and bring up your laptop and pull up your LinkedIn profile. We have, I think, about an hour together here today, and I would like to allow for some time for some interactive questions as well. Okay. So we'll go ahead and get started. And I, I pulled this up when I was thinking about kind of kicking this presentation off. I was thinking about my own career and how I've leveraged LinkedIn throughout my career. And you can see the photo evolution of me through the years, you know, different haircuts <laughs> and, and styles and colors and things like that. But it's a little bit of my brain has kind of evolved and that's what I'm looking to, to bring to each of you today as we go throughout. So um, one thing that if you follow me on social media, you'll learn quickly about me. I love my family and I love my job, obviously. I love my job here, right? But I also love coffee, chocolate, and... Hi. Pie. Pie. So if you follow me online, you know that I love pie. And you're going to see a pie theme in some of the slides as we go throughout today. And I love pie so much that when I come out to present, I bring a pie with me to give away. It has nothing to do with my business. I'm not a baker. I just really love pie. So I brought a peach pie with me today. And I've got a, a pie tin. I'm actually going to ask um, Maggie if you want to pass that around the room. If you'd like a chance to win that today, just drop your business card. Or if you just want to put your name on a slip of paper, I'm going to see if I can ask one of the conference organizers if we can maybe draw that after lunch or something today. All right? So that's a little bit of the pie thing. And that's why you're going to see some of those pie descriptions up on the screen. So the other thing I want to mention is what I do for a living is social media and LinkedIn, and I would encourage you to take pictures. You always have that phone with you wherever you go, and I guarantee there's going to be something up on the screen here today that you're going to want to remember later. You're not going to find the slide deck. So feel free to take pictures, but just flip your, don't do your phone upright. Flip your phone sideways, because if you're looking at the slides, it covers more of the text that way. And the other thing is if you're sharing those photos on LinkedIn, LinkedIn prefers horizontal. If you do the upright, you will decapitate me. Right? <laughs> so don't do that. Okay? Use it sideways. All right. So today, I think you have in the description in your, in your program, what we're going to focus on are a couple areas, really optimizing our profile. We're going to talk about invitation strategy and how to really build your personal brand so that when you are ready for that next phase of your career, you've kind of got that solid brand for yourself out on LinkedIn. Uh, we're going to talk about using um, LinkedIn for, for career search, but really focusing more on stealth mode. And that's my term, it's not a LinkedIn term. It's what I used to describe, you are maybe subtly looking for a job and you don't want your employer to know. Or maybe you want to position yourself so that when you're ready to make a move someday, you, you have that profile and everything's ready to go. And we'll talk about some tips on connecting with people on LinkedIn and how to um, also and score that valuable space on the LinkedIn homepage feed, but without annoying people going through the process. And you probably want to know what I say when I say annoying people. There's some of those people that are like selling. It's the mortgage people and the real estate. Like you're seeing selling messages all the time. We're going to focus on some different types of techniques there. So that's kind of the um, HR description of what you'll learn. I love PI, so I'm breaking this all down to PI acronyms throughout. You're going to learn profile optimization. You're going to learn invitation strategies. And we're going to learn engagement. Those are the three things that we're going to be covering off today. All right, so that's a little bit about kind of the conference. And, and you're in a session here that's talking about, you know, something that might be a little, um, little difficult. You know, you don't maybe necessarily want to go back and say, hey, I attended a LinkedIn session that talked about how to leverage LinkedIn throughout my career. Because then your coworkers and your manager might say, well, hold on, you're thinking about making a move or what's happening there. So you can say, instead say, I learned about profile optimization, invitation strategies, and engagement techniques. So it's a little bit of a, a workaround to answer that. All right, so I um, told you a little bit about myself, my loves. I'm going to actually take these off as I get going here today. And I've used LinkedIn throughout my career. I've used it as a job seeker. I, I first used LinkedIn back in 2008 when I um, was working for a former employer. 
Sherry was working with me at the time, and I was ready to make a move. I knew I wasn't able to move up anymore in the organization at the time. And you all remember what 2008 was like, right? The worst time possible to think about making a move. And I didn't want to do the monster and the hot job route. I wanted to try something different. So I started stepping up my efforts on LinkedIn. I disconnected from the manager of the company, my immediate boss, they wouldn't see my activities. And then I just started leaning into LinkedIn, and one day I found a job opportunity on LinkedIn, made a direct connection with the hiring manager, and the rest is history. So I wouldn't be here today if it weren't for LinkedIn. So part of the reason I do these talks is to help share that knowledge and insights with others. I've used it throughout my career as a marketer as well. That's kind of my background. So I'm always thinking about who is your audience and why do they care about these messages, okay? And I'm now independent. I've left the corporate world, started my own business, Mellow Marketing, where I help people and businesses unlock the power of LinkedIn. So I'm doing this in both a consulting role, working with individuals and companies, as well as training teams on the power of LinkedIn, okay? So that's a little bit about me. It does say up on screen, I'm an introvert at heart, and I know you're thinking you're crazy, you're not an introvert, you're wearing a feather bow and you're up on stage, right? <laughs> but I say that because there's probably a few of you in the audience that are also introverts, and that is not a character flaw, that's a personality description. So after I present today, I'm gonna wanna go sit in a quiet place for a little while and kind of collect my energy, right? And then I'm fine, you know, after that. But um, whereas extroverts get their energy from being around people, introverts get our energy from, from being a little bit quieter in our space, okay? And I share that with you in case there's somebody else in the room that you kind of feel that same way about yourself. All right, so that's about me. Now, I'd like to know about a few of you, and if I could get maybe two volunteers here. And one thing to keep in mind, is we're talking about LinkedIn is, um, and I love this meme, because it, it really speaks volumes. Even if people don't know you, they will look you up on LinkedIn, right? <laughs> and they will read your story, and they will read about your connections and your activity and all that good stuff, okay? So keep that in mind as we're going throughout. So with that said, could I get a first volunteer if you tell me your name, company, why did you choose this session, and your favorite kind of pie? Any volunteers? Yes. Ashley Bartosh, um, I'm with Eastern Michigan University. I chose this session, I was a former recruiter, and so we were always looking at LinkedIn, and so I want to really up my LinkedIn profile. Awesome. And my favorite kind of pie is uh, apple pie with a crumble top. Apple pie, solid. Can I take this around the room? Testing, testing, this is the work. Testing, testing. Ashley, leave your book in front. You get to wear the pink feather bowl. <laughs> the pink feather bowl will be moving around the room during the presentation today. Have some fun with that. There you go. Thank you, Ashley. Thank you. <laughs> and apple pie is a salad pie. All right, we had another hand. Where is that at? Is this one working? Yeah, it's working. All right, I'm going to hand you the microphone so we can hear the questions, if that's okay. There you go. Hi, my name is Denisha Williams. I work for AT&T. Okay. The reason why I chose this session because I want to learn more about LinkedIn and how it can help me to find another position in awesome. HR. And my favorite kind of pie is sweet potato pie. Awesome, thank you. You wanna help out? All right, I think totally we're good for that for now. So, and I'm sure there's a variety of different reasons you're here in the room. You may be here in the room because you're looking at using LinkedIn to help activate your employees as brand ambassadors. There might be a couple of those people in the room, right? You may be here in the room because you're using LinkedIn for recruiting and you can't figure out how to work LinkedIn outside of LinkedIn Recruiter. You also may be in the room because you're not thinking right now you want to make a career change, but at some point in the future, you may want to move around and you want to get yourself kind of set up for that success. So whatever the reasons are, I'm here to help you. I want to be your guide and help walk you through this. So what I'd like to start with is just some basic facts on LinkedIn. And before I do that, quick show of hands, how many people are on LinkedIn? Awesome, just about everybody, right? Is there anybody not on LinkedIn yet? I think we're all just about on LinkedIn, right? So LinkedIn is now up to 660 million members. It's growing and it's continuing to grow, whereas some of the other social platforms are now starting to reach a plateau, and um, LinkedIn is still growing. And I think with what's happening in some of the social networking sites, some people are leaving Facebook and they're coming over to LinkedIn. And what I'm hearing from those people is, wow, it's, it's nice on, on, on LinkedIn. People are friendly, they're polite, they don't have all the political stuff that's happening over here. So they're really happy with it. So even though LinkedIn has 660 million members, there's only about 303 million that are active on a monthly basis. Because not everybody goes on LinkedIn every single day. We have people that use it only when they're job searching or only when they're doing prospecting for business development. 
and they're not on it all the time. Now, 48% of us log in daily. How many people log in on LinkedIn within the past day or so? Right? Okay, so it probably depends on the needs of your business and what, what you're doing um, in terms of your activities. Now, the average user is only spending about 17 minutes a month on LinkedIn. So they're not going on LinkedIn as we do on Facebook and Instagram and sitting there and scrolling around for hours and hours. I like to think about when you go on LinkedIn, it's almost the same as reading the Wall Street Journal, okay? We pull out the paper, we read it from cover to cover, we're in business mode, right? And then we fold the paper away and we go on with our business day. So LinkedIn's the same, we're spending a small amount of time using the network. And one thing to keep in mind is that if you have a profile photo on your account, you will get more views. So does anybody have that gray avatar? You don't have to raise your hand, but you know what I'm talking about, the gray avatar photo? And when we see that, we kind of think, well, this person is either a newbie to LinkedIn or they're, um, they don't know how to upload a profile or they're hiding something, right? And we are less active, less um, apt to look at their profile, and we are less apt to send them an invitation as well, okay? You will get more invitation requests if you have that profile photo on there too. So I'm gonna start actually with some techniques that kind of, I like to think about beginning with the end in mind. Was that Stephen Covey? Remember that? Yes. Think was, right? So beginning with the end in mind, and I want to give you some things right off the bat that you can look at, and these are going to help you to assess your progress and really the, the growth of your personal brand on LinkedIn. So right now, if you have your phone or your laptop with you, I want you to go on your profile right now, okay? And we're going to look at a section of your profile. It's right underneath your summary. It should say your dashboard, private to you. You guys seeing that? Okay. And then there's three numbers they give you. The first is who viewed your profile, the second is how many times your last post was seen, and the third is how many times you came up in searches in the past week, okay? So the number I want you to look at is the first number, okay? And this is what I do for a living, so don't freak out if your numbers are not 5,000. This is what I do, and I'm really focused on building this all the time. But the technique that I've incorporated is something that you can do as well. So what I want you to do is click on that number, and then it pulls up a trend line, okay? This is the past 90 days. This is the past 90 days, how many times people have viewed my profile, okay? And what I like to do is focus on the peaks. I don't worry as much about the dips because the dips will happen. And why do they happen? Seasonal fluctuations. I'm busy with work, I'm not active on LinkedIn. That's another thing if I'm not posting as often. Another thing that just happened, LinkedIn has done another algorithm change within search. And you see that dip that happened for me right in the middle of November there? I can't figure out what, what happened. I'm not changing any of my activity or anything that's, that's going on. And I started asking around to other LinkedIn coaches and trainers and they said, yep, we're noticing it too. So now we're putting our heads together trying to figure out what's happening with the, the search algorithm. And we're gonna report back when we figure it out. So pay attention on that one. But again, this is a technique that just will help you to assess your progress. As we go throughout, I'm gonna talk about optimizing your profile so that when people land on your profile, they read your story. Whether you're looking for a job now or in the future, it's going to help them to kind of understand who you are and what your capabilities are. Okay, so that's the first thing. The other thing is, and this will be some homework for you to look at maybe a little bit later. Is anybody familiar with the LinkedIn SSI? Has anybody ever heard of that before? Yep. Do you know what your score is in the back? 64. Okay. What's your name? Alma. Alma. Could you pass the feather boa? We're going to get Alma to feather boa over here. <laughs> So this is the score that LinkedIn gives out, and it's called your social selling index, and by definition, it's an index. So an index goes on a scale of zero to 100, 50 is average. So anything above 50, and I'm not, you got a 64, I mean, you're above average, so you're, you're rocking there, so that's really good. So anything above 50 is good, and it's just one way of assessing your, your personal brand on LinkedIn. How active are you at connecting with the right people? starting conversations, engaging with insights, and searching for and finding the right people on LinkedIn. So it's just a number um, that LinkedIn gives you, but I like to look at this periodically, and as I'm activating my profile, as I'm posting, as I'm engaging with other people, I notice my, my SSI will go up a little bit. Okay? So this is actually something that's a little bit tucked behind the scenes on LinkedIn, you have to dig for it. So there's two ways you can look it up. One way is you can just Google LinkedIn Social Selling Index and follow the link that it takes you to. The other thing is I set up a, a, a redirect URL on my website. So if you go to mellermarketing.com slash my LinkedIn SSI, 
And then I have a link that says click see your SSI and that'll redirect you to the page on LinkedIn. Okay? So they have it tucked a little bit behind the scenes because it's a tool, bless you, that they're using to um, try to get people to upgrade to Sales Navigator. Okay? So keep that in mind. It's a tool they're using to try to get you to upgrade to Sales Navigator. So don't freak out when you look at their number and they'll say, you can raise your score by upgrading to Sales Navigator. Don't do that, okay? Unless you think that, that there's some value in that, that tool for your business. Okay? So this is just another tool. And again, feel free to take pictures of the slides as we're going out throughout today. Um, and also, if you'd like a, a copy of the slides, um, do I have any handouts going around yet? I need some help with the handouts. Um, I have uh, a note at the bottom that just says message me on LinkedIn or um, email me. And I have an email address. Just shoot me an email and say, Brenda, can you shoot me a copy of the slides? And I'll send it off. Sound good? All right. So that was a little bit hard to read, especially from the back. All right. So now let's spend a little bit of time optimizing your profile on LinkedIn. And I would encourage you to follow along, look at your profile as we're going through these, these next few slides here. And you'll probably have some homework that you'll want to refer back to and come back to these again later. So let's start with the concept here of when you're building your profile on LinkedIn, I like to think about the concept of really what you're doing is you're sculpting your online brand, okay? And um, I love this little, the statue of the little girl out in, in is it, is, I'm not in Times Square, but it's in like the Wall Street District. Wow. Has anybody seen it in person? Like I can't wait till I go to New York and get a picture of her. But um, it's that determined look and, and I, I love that analogy of the sculpture and that's why I use this as an example. So think about when they first got that, that slab of whatever that, that steel material was and a sculpture, the end result of that sculpture is as much about what they take out as what they keep in. Okay. So think about your LinkedIn profile the same way. You know, it's not about throwing everything in there like you're, you would on your resume and kind of keeping your fingers crossed and hoping it sticks. It's really about thinking who is your ideal target audience. You're writing it for that person. Um, and fill out every area they give you. Use all of the character counts they give you in there. And then really, um, you know, you're writing this for human beings to read, so I want it to be interesting. If Sherry lands on my profile, I want her to, to read my story and understand about me. But I also want to write it for a computer so that I'm coming up in search results on LinkedIn. Okay? So all the techniques I'm going to share with you kind of keep those things in mind. All right, so this is the checklist we'll be going through. And I think you guys, did everybody get a copy of the handout? Are they still floating around? Okay. So these are in your handout for you, so you can refer back to these later. So I'll be covering um, a couple of points in each of the areas on, on the page here. Your photos, your headline, your content information, your about description, experience, skills, and recommendations. Okay. So let's start with your profile photo. And if you have your phone, look at your profile photo right now. Okay. And look at this photo and let's just kind of ask ourselves this question. Is this you at your professional best? Does this photo look like you? Or is this you from 20 years ago? Right? You guys know who those people are, right? A little awkward you see them in person, you're like, wait a minute, that's a younger version of you. So is it a current photo? Are you pleasant? Are you smiling? Is it a professional looking image? And then um, something that's kind of subtle that people don't think about as much is, is your face from the top of your head to your chin, is that about 50 to 60 percent of the circle? And that's important for two reasons. One is about half of web traffic nowadays is occurring on a mobile device. So if your profile photo is from the top of your head to your waist, you're really far back and it's hard for us to see your face. Okay? And even look at a couple of the example photos that I had on here. Um, the gal who's fourth in line, I don't know her, I'm connected with her. Great photo, but consider how she looks in context to the other people. When she's set further back, she looks less important. She looks a little bit more diminutive and maybe not as, as much of it as in a leadership position. Okay? When you're zoomed up closer, you look more important, you look more impressive, you look more approachable. Okay? So you can zoom that photo in. And what I do, if you click on the little photo icon, there's a grid, and I try to get my top of my head to my chin in the first two squares. Okay? So just zoom that in a little bit. All right, um, moving on, the next thing I would have you look at is your header image that's in the background. That's that rectangular block. And um, my guess is probably about half of you have the teal blue and the dots and the lines that we have. Okay. You didn't know any better, but now you do, right? So you can and you should definitely change that header image. And what I look for, and again, I'm, I'm going into stealth mode a little bit right now, I'm kind of thinking about the strategy, is ideally you should be promoting your organization, okay? And um, 
what you could do is if you have a marketing department or graphic designer, go back after this conference and said, Brenda Meller says, I need a branded header, can you give me one? And give them the dimensions and say, I need to get some, and they'll probably be happy. Oh, absolutely, here's some branding, you know, go put it up on your LinkedIn profile, because you're helping to promote your business, right? So that's a really good thing. If not promoting your business, then you might want to think about at minimum, at least changing it from the default, and you can use a stock photo site. I use um, Pexels, Unsplash, Pixabagels are all free stock photography. And maybe choose a picture of mountains or a lake or lighting effects or something that's different than the default. Ideally, it should be something that supports or promotes your professional brand. So if I wanted to leave my corporate employer but stay within HR, maybe I use an image that's showing people or that has the word HR or leadership or things in there instead. Okay, so just try to think about that a little bit differently from the default. And I do have a couple of, um, I'm gonna call these folks rock stars. You know, people I'm connected with on LinkedIn, and I think they've got some, some really great photos in the background. Does anybody know Paul Sherwood? Yeah. Paul, okay, Paul's a rock star, right? And Paul just changed companies. He's with a company now called iMed Vision Care, and he's got a branded image, probably from his company stock library, of the eyeglasses that are kind of behind the scenes there. So really nice company branding. How about James Reed? Any James Reed fans in the house? He's awesome, right? So tell James I talked about him today, mm -hmm. by the way. So he's got a really clean looking header, but it's company branding with, with just the initials and the colors and things that are in the background. Probably provided by his marketing department too, though. Um, Courtney, she's not in the HR industry. She's in a group that I belong to called Together Digital. And she's got just a collage of different photos and images. So if any of you folks here in the room are public speakers and thinking about, you know, maybe that, that next step for you, that side hustle or that, that move away from corporate might be consulting in public speaking, and you speak at events, maybe you put a collage of photos of you speaking at events and use that as an example. And then Lee Meadows, you guys know Lee, right? Everybody knows Lee. Lee's gonna be here today. So um, he's got a great photo of him speaking to an audience in, in the background of his header. So just think about how that header image helps to support your professional brand. And then also, if you're in stealth mode, think about how it supports your employer, okay? And um, the, the technique I'm trying to think about here is if you don't want to flag your employer that you're, you're making a move, what do you do to, to kind of throw them off the chase? You do your best job of promoting that company you can. You put branding throughout your profile, you sell the company, you talk about the company to other people, because then they're not gonna go, well, Brenda's thinking about jumping ship. No, they're gonna go, wow, Brenda is a great brand ambassador. We love Brenda. Well, guess what? Competitors of my company are also gonna see Brenda's activity. And they're gonna go, wow, Brenda's a great brand ambassador. Maybe we should hire Brenda, right? So I'm kinda going a little bit under the radar, but blatantly doing that, right, with that branding. All right, so let's move on now. Let's talk about your LinkedIn headline. So right below your name field, they give you a, um, a field that's called headline. It's not called job title at company, but that's the default. So if you look at yours right now, it says HR manager at XYZ company, I would recommend you think about changing that and making it a little bit more interesting, a little bit more dynamic, a little bit more descriptive. And think about this. When you do a search on LinkedIn and you look for keywords and you look at people that come up in those search results, and I'm gonna show you on the left here, this is just a quick search I did for HR manager on LinkedIn. And the search results, the only thing that I'm seeing in the search results, I'm seeing the, the headshot photo, the person at the top's got the gray avatar, so that's where the person, I'm gonna scan right past her because I don't know if she's really active on LinkedIn, right? Um, I see the headshot photo, I see job title at company, and, and that's all I see. I see greater Detroit area and other, other stuff, but I kind of ignore that. So what I'm really paying attention to is I'm scanning through the results is the headline. So if everybody says HR manager at company, HR manager at company, everybody's blending in together. The only thing that's differentiating you is your company. What if instead, if you use some keywords or phrases or even adjectives to describe yourself, are you an energetic HR manager? Are you a progressive thinking HR strategist? So think about using some different keywords and phrases. And I've got some examples in here, um, just you know, different people and, and they've modified their headlines. So Paul's another example, I'm gonna use him again. So instead of just saying job title at company, he says connecting with health insurance brokers and companies to deliver exceptional service, dot, dot, dot. Okay, now I, I point this out for two reasons. One is it's a little bit different, but two, when you see the dot, 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 keep in mind they give you 120 characters, but after about 80, it goes dot, dot, dot. Okay, we'll see the full headline.
sideline and we go to his profile, but we wanted to make sure that we're thinking about um, front loaded and top heavy in terms of the keywords you have in there. Okay? And there's a couple other examples, you can check those out as well. Um, I'm going to go back to the previous slide and I have some other kind of criteria to think about here in terms of phrases, goals. Doesn't need to match your job title, but um, it can include your job title as, as uh, a couple of those keywords. Okay? So that'll be a little bit of homework. Does this make it sense? Helpful? And again, think about search results. Your goal is to get somebody to click on your profile to learn more about you. And you're not going to get them there if you're blending in with your competitors. Okay? All right, let's move on now. Let's look at your contact information. Now, anybody who's on your laptop, you could be able to click on your contact info and it'll pop this up. If you're on your phone, you'd have to scroll all the way down to the bottom of your phone and there'll be a section that's called contact info. So what I recommend here is that you look at your contact information at least annually. And especially if you've changed jobs in the past couple of years, you might have your website from your former employer still listed in that section. And you probably want to change that out. Okay? And just kind of scan through the list and just see does everything look accurate and, and, and as you'd like it to be. Um, one thing I look at in the contact information is your LinkedIn URL, that's your LinkedIn web address. And if you have a web address that ends in some gobbledygook characters, it might say linkedin.com slash in slash Brenda Muller dash 1ZX238YQOP or some weird code. If you have that, that's just an, a random um, modifier that LinkedIn gives you, and I highly recommend you can and you should change that. Now, I think you can only do this from desktop. I'm not sure if you can do this from your phone. But in the desktop, what you would do is in the contact information, you could click on that URL, it pops you to this other page where it says in the upper right hand corner, edit public profile and URL. Okay? When you click on that, then there's this box that comes up and there's a little pencil icon next to it. When you click on the pencil icon, then you can modify that and then simplify it, make it a little bit easier um, for people to type it in if they need to. Okay? And while you're in this section in your edit your public profile settings, um, and again, this is easier to do from laptop. I see everybody trying to find it on their phones. It's easier to do from your laptop. So I would recommend just when you get back in front of the computer, um, check out these settings. But what I like to say is blue shows us you. So if we're building our personal brand, we're building out our LinkedIn presence, we're building out our profile, but you go into your public profile settings and everything's locked down, you're private and people can't see you, it kind of defeats the purpose of what you're, you're trying to do on LinkedIn. So I would recommend just kind of scrolling through these areas, making sure things are opened up for maximum visibility, even down to your profile photo, I recommend setting it to public so that everybody can see it, not just the people that are connected to you, okay? And then all the other buttons, make sure those are toggled open to blue as well. So again, blue shows us you, and that just kind of helps to open up your profile. All right, moving along now, let's talk about your, your about statement. They used to call this your summary, but they now call this your about statement on LinkedIn. So look at your summary statement right now, your, your about statement right now, and you're going to notice as you're looking at it on your phone or on your desktop, you can only see three lines, and then you have to click on show more to see the full description. Okay, I'm going to let you guys in on a little something here. Most people will not click on show more. The right people will, but only if you capture their attention in those first three sentences. So don't start with, I was born in a small town and ran around the road and then I came back again and blah, blah, dot, 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 show more. You've lost me, I'm not interested. You wanna start right away with something that's compelling. So if it's in the third person, change it to the third person. You know, rather than saying experienced HR manager who gets results, I am a passionate, experienced HR manager who gets results. I love working with my team, blah, 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 blah. So change it up to first person, make it a little bit more of an engaging, storytelling approach in there. Um, if you're struggling with um, how do I describe myself, look at your competitors, but really look at your aspirational competitors, the people that are rocking it in your job title, in your space. Look at their profile, see how they're describing themselves, and I guarantee you will learn techniques from them. Okay? A couple of the HR um, rock stars I showed you earlier, those are some people I would recommend you look at their, their profiles. If you have any recommendations on your LinkedIn profile, I would say look at your recommendations. What do people say about you? You know, it's really hard to write about yourself, right? I mean, it, and it feels like oh, I'm shining the spotlight on myself. I don't want to talk about myself. But look at what do other people say about you? How do they describe you? That might give you some inspiration. You might say people describe me as a creative, results-oriented, progressive HR person, right? So use some of those recommendations to help to drive your, your summary statement. 
And then I have media. Does anybody in the room here have media in their summary statement, in their about statement? Does anybody have media? Nobody? You already got the feather ball, but you do have media in there, right? So, I mean, what can you put in there? You could put work samples if you, if you have things that are appropriate to put on your profile. You could put team photos if you're at retreats or team building events. You could put awards that you've received, certifications that you've received. If you're, you're speaking at conferences and events, you put a picture of yourself or a video link in there. If you blog, you can put articles, links to articles in there. So basically, you can put pictures, you can put PDFs, you can put links to web pages or, or videos in there. So this adds a little bit of um, kind of color and, and life to your profile. It, it will definitely differentiate you from other people, too. So think about how can you use media to help to tell your story, okay? All right, and I do have in here in, in the deck a screen capture of my um, about statement. LinkedIn gives you 2,000 characters. Remember earlier I said use the maximum character limits for all those areas. I try to fill out as much as I can. I'm focusing on the first three lines. I'm trying to get your attention. But then I'm going to use all of the other characters they give you. And you can see when you're scanning through, even on screen, even though you can't read everything, you can see that I have short paragraphs. I've got breaks in between. I'm using all caps for section headings. And I even use emojis that are appropriate for LinkedIn, of course. I'm not using like crazy smiley face emojis and things like that. But I use emojis in there as in my bulleted list. And the way you do that is you create it in your desktop and you go on your phone, pull up your emoji keyboard, and you can add the emojis in there. That's a little, little work around there. Um, feel free to look at my profile as often as you'd like. On LinkedIn, it's not stalking, it is research. Okay? And I am giving you permission to research me as much as you would like. This is what I do for a living. I'm always tweaking and modifying based on what I'm learning about the algorithm and different techniques. So feel free to look at my profile as you're working on yours as well. All right. So moving on, I want you to scroll down to your experience section right now. Okay. One of the most common mistakes I see in here is that all you have listed in here is your employer and your job title. That's it. Okay. And if we're thinking about um, making a job change, if we want to be in stealth mode, this is one of the areas I would really have you think about um, increasing in terms of content and um, even thinking about what the content is that's in this area. And the tip here is you want to make yourself look like the absolute best cheerleader rock star of the organization of all time. Okay? So in this section, what I would do is I would start with the description of your company, maybe one to three sentences, an easy way to get that is if you click on your employer logo, it will take you to your LinkedIn company page, and there's an about paragraph, and you can just grab it from there, paste it right in that section. So starting with company description, then tell us about the products and services your company offers. You're being a great brand ambassador, you're demonstrating your organization, you're helping people to learn more about what the organization does. Now, if you're in a recruiting type of a role or, or a, a something along those lines, you could also say, visit our careers page at, you know, that type of thing. So you can include that in there. Then follow with a description of your role. And you can even, you know, if you're, if you're open to doing so, consider including your contact information, whether it's an email address or where people would go to get a hold of you, uh, a web page or something like that. Okay? Um, then I put a list of specialties. And this is just a keyword list. This helps me to come up with more searches on LinkedIn. And it's just a running keyword list separated by commas, maybe five to 10 words that I want to be found for on LinkedIn. So maybe it's HR strategy, consultative leadership, leadership training, whatever. You know, just think about those keywords that you want to be known for. My guess is that some of those keywords are also in your skills list at the bottom of your profile. So you may want to pull like the top five or 10 and you can drop those in there. That will help you to come up with more searches on LinkedIn. And your goal here is to make this section interesting and, in, and um, informative for your ideal target audience, for your company's ideal target audience, or for your, your audience for the organization. Okay? So spend a little bit of time building that up. And this is a really good way, again, of just demonstrating you're an absolute great brand ambassador and cheerleader for the company. And it, it um, helps to, to demonstrate that you're, you're building up your, your company's brand there, too. All right, so we just talked about skills. So the next thing I want to talk about is your skill section. So scroll down to your skill section of your profile. And LinkedIn gives you 50. How many skills do you think I have on my profile? 50. 50. I'm going to get the feather bow to one of the gentlemen in the room. I'm going to grab that from you, okay? So 50 on your profile. And the more skills you put on your profile, the more um, you'll come up in searches. Thank you. On LinkedIn. So if you're struggling with, I can't think of 50, 
Um, what I would do is look at your competitors. Look at other LinkedIn members who hold your job title. You can wear it if you like. <laughs> Um, you can look at other people who hold your job title on. Look at that, he's getting a score with it and everything. I think the guys like this other girl the most of all. Um, look at other LinkedIn members who have your job title. What skills do they list? And that might help you to fill out that list of 50. But really what's more important here, what are the top three? Most people will not click on show more. So they're going to look at the top three. They're going to make a judgment call about your expertise based on what they see as the top three. Are those top three the th three things that you want to be known for? If not, you can and you should reorder those. And I would recommend doing this from your desktop. You click on that little pencil icon and you can move things around. Basically what happens is the three skills that you've gotten the most endorsements for, those go to the top and they're pinned. And you can unpin and pin something else in its place. Okay, so just think about what are the top three things I want to be known for. For me, it's LinkedIn strategy, social selling, public speaking. Okay, for you, it might be other keywords. I'm hoping it's other keywords, otherwise you should be here, right? Um, but think about kind of using all 50 and then really thinking strategically about what are those top three. Okay, final thing in the profile and then we're going to go into some invitation strategy and we're going to talk about engagement on LinkedIn is um, let's think about LinkedIn recommendations. And this is one of the areas when I'm, I'm working with a client, I can usually tell right away when was the last time they made a job change because there was a flurry of recommendations that happened right around that time. Okay. So if you want to be in stealth mode on LinkedIn, do not wait until you are looking for a job to get new recommendations. What I would recommend is that you try to give and request one to two recommendations every year. Okay? When I look at a profile, last time you made a job change was 2011, and the last flurry of recommendations was in late 2010, 2011. Well, that's when she started her job search, right? So don't make it easier for people to see that. You've got to think about these recommendations all the time. And um, when you're requesting recommendations, think about the people that you have great working relationships with, whether it's coworkers or if you can't have recommendations because of your work workplace policy, think about people outside of the workplace. You know, people that you are fellow members of Detroit Sherm with that, that kind of speak to your professional expertise. People you serve on boards with, people you're involved with in, within the community of PTOs and other organizations. Ask if they'd be open to give you a LinkedIn recommendation. If it feels awkward, they're not the right person. Okay? And I only ask people if I know um, definitely, and I don't know if I've ever asked you, Peggy, for a recommendation. Like Peggy's the kind of person I wouldn't feel weird. I wouldn't, I wouldn't feel like, I don't know if she's gonna give me one. She's gonna go, I don't really like you. No, I'm not gonna do that. It's the kind of people that would say, Brenda, if you ever need anything, let me know. You should like the bell should go off in your head and you should be like, oh, I'm going to ask you for a LinkedIn recommendation. Okay. Also, I'm a big proponent of social media karma, paying it forward. So think all the time about who could you be giving recommendations to, and think strategically about who you could be giving recommendations to. Now, my friend Sherry Kenyon, she's a very experienced HR leader. She's got a broad network. I know that if I gave her a LinkedIn recommendation. I know she would accept it, it would go on her profile. Guess what? All the people looking at Sherry Kenyon's profile are going to see Brenda Mellor when they get to her recommendation section. You did that nine or ten years ago. I did that ten years ago, <laughs> yeah. So, um, and Sherry and I think we had, I think I gave her one, she gave me one. We had a great working relationship at the time. So you can even think about that, kind of doing that exchange of recommendations. Okay? So your homework here is pay it forward. You know, start by giving recommendations first and think strategically about that, and then also request some new recommendations on your profile. But don't wait until you're making that job search. And also, please don't do a flurry of them, because it's like a sure side red flag goes off, like this person's making a move right now, okay? So spread those out a little bit. All right, now we're gonna talk about building strategic connections on LinkedIn. And we are in a room full of people that um, we should be connecting with throughout the conference. So we're actually gonna practice this technique right now. And um, as um, this movie, is it The Princess Bride? I still need to see it. I know, it's terrible. <laughs> the Princess Bride. So this, this meme will help you to remember the concept here we're talking about is invitation strategy and personalizing invitations. So from this day forward, when you send out invitations, I always want you to think about including a note to give it some context, okay? So his meme, you know, he says, hello, my name is Anigo Montoya. You killed my father, prepare to die. Now, this has all of the great elements of a LinkedIn invitation, but do not tell people prepare to die because HR will call you in, right? Or your HR, you'll call yourself in. 
Um, but you know, it has all the great elements. He has a polite greeting. He has his name. He is uh, including a relevant personal link, and he is managing expectations. Okay. So how do we translate this into LinkedIn? Well, here's what I did. I just did a quick search on, on LinkedIn last night for um, chief human resource officers, and these are people I'm not yet connected with that came up in my search results. And when you see the people coming up in the search results, don't click on the connect button there because it'll send the invitation off and you can't personalize it. Instead, go on their profile. And for, for two reasons, you know, one is um, if you click on connect, you can't personalize. Two is you need some information in order to make the invitation personal to them. You're not going to get that from looking here. So click on their name to go to their profile. And then if I knew this person, I would um, use that in my context of the invitation. Hey, hey Keith, we met at the Detroit Sherm Conference. Let's connect on LinkedIn for all. If I didn't uh, meet Keith before, I'm going to look at his profile and find maybe one or two things that we have in common, and that's what I would use in the invitation. So um, one thing before I show you the invitation screen here is if you visit someone's profile, you ever visit someone's profile and it says follow instead of connect? Mm -hmm. Or you don't see a connect button anywhere, there's like other buttons on there. Um, my workaround for this is most people will allow you to connect with them, they're just some people are creating a hurdle. Um, I've got a large network, so I've changed from follow to connect myself, or from connect to follow myself. If you see, uh, if you don't see the connect button, look for more, or the three dots, and then click on that, and then you get the uh, option to personalize, invite, or connect. Okay, so it's a little workaround in there. All right, so in this case, I can see the connect button, I click on it, and now I include context of information. So in this case, I haven't met Keith, so I've looked at his profile. And I said, hi, Keith, we haven't met, but we're both in Metro Detroit, and we share several common connections, including, and I'm going to name drop somebody that's in our invitation list that I know well and that would say nice things about me. Okay? So Lauren's one of the people we have in common. So I said, including Lauren Wenzel. Plus, we both attended Central Michigan University. Fire up chips. Right? <laughs> Let's connect on LinkedIn, Brenda Meller. So I've included the Inigo Montoya fold, uh, the, that, um, the reference kind of line there a name, a relevant personal link, I'm managing expectations. I'm not asking Keith for a job, even if someday I do want to ask Keith for a job. I'm only asking to get that invitation accepted. Let's connect on LinkedIn, that's what I'm doing. So I want you guys to practice this right now. Um, I want you to turn to your neighbor and get their name. If you're already connected with your neighbor, then you can look me up instead on LinkedIn. But I want you to go in the profile. Before you do so, guys, though, um, on mobile, the process is a little bit different. When you go on their profile on mobile, do not click on the connect button. On mobile, you always, always, always want to click on the more button. When you click on the more button, you get that menu that's in the middle. Okay? So let's do this now. We're going to practice inviting uh, our neighbors to connect. If you're connected with your neighbors, you can look up my name, Brenda Meller, and you can send me an invitation. I'm going to walk around and see if you guys need help. Okay? I'm forcing you to connect. And you're sitting by yourself. Because even if 
you're sitting next to the person at the table today, six months from now, you're going to look back at that person and say, how did I connect with them? Who is this person? Who's the gentleman who's sitting next to me inside the, um, the exhibit hall? Is he in the room right now? Jim, is it? I don't think he's in here. So he and I just connected, and he didn't include a note, and I told him, I said, but four months from now, when we need some LinkedIn help, you're going to look me up and go, how did I meet her? Like, where did I go? And if you include a note, it's in the messaging chain. So you can kind of look back at that, and it, and it helps to refresh your memory. Okay? Are we good? We'll move on. All right. We're going to keep going. All right, so let's kind of finish this conversation off, and then we'll open it up to some Q&A here. Let's talk about my E, which is engaging on LinkedIn. And when we're thinking about using LinkedIn um, to position ourselves throughout our HR career, network engagement is really key. So we've got kind of the three areas. Profile optimization, you've got to have a solid profile so that when people visit your profile, you're telling your story in the way that you want it to be told. You have to have a solid invitation strategy in place so that when you're sending out invitations, you have a higher likelihood of, of those invitations being accepted. And the third area here is engaging on LinkedIn. So we can't just build out our profile and then walk away from LinkedIn and keep our fingers crossed and wait for the recruiters and the headhunters and those um, awesome opportunities to come and swoop us out and move us to another company. We have to engage and we have to stay active on LinkedIn. And I guarantee if you are connected with me or following me on LinkedIn, I'm going to be one of those people that you always see in your homepage feed. Would anybody in the room that's connected with me agree with that? Anybody? Maggie's raising her hand. Sherry's not paying attention. She's <laughs> <laughs> having a conversation over here. 81 views. Good, good. So engaging on LinkedIn is really key to building your personal brand, building up your visibility, and building up network engagement. So the value of posting on LinkedIn, let's talk about this a little bit. Your profile is really for selling yourself. That's where you're telling your story, you're talking about your business, you know, what are your asks and those types of things. You're really developing your personal brand on your profile. Your posts are for telling, okay? And I don't like to sell in my posts. Very rarely do I do that. I more often I talk about other people. I talk about events. I talk about articles I read. I share free tips, that type of thing. I'm doing more telling in the posts. And when you post on LinkedIn, you are staying top of mind, okay? So it's really easy to connect with somebody and then kind of blend in the background and you forget about them. But if you post, you're staying top of mind for your network. And I look for, in terms of posting strategy, that you're posting at least once a week, ideally once per business day, okay? And I'll give you some, some ideas here in just a minute, but that's kind of the cadence I look for. And post, when you post on LinkedIn, remember that trend line we looked at earlier, the 90-day trend line? When you post, that will drive people looking at your profile. Okay, so this is helping to bring people to our profile. All right, so what I like to do though before um, posting something myself is I always start by paying it forward. I'm gonna go into my homepage feed first and I'm going to scroll through the homepage feed. And I might spend five minutes every visit, you know, the first time I go to LinkedIn that day, just scrolling through the homepage feed. Just like, you know, I pick up my Wall Street Journal, I'm reading the news, right? I'm reading the news, but here I'm reading the news on LinkedIn and I'm reading about people in my network companies in my network, I'm seeing um, posts that are getting a lot of engagement, I'm participating in some of those conversations. So what I would recommend for you is spend maybe five minutes a day going through your LinkedIn homepage feed. Likes are good, comments are even better. And when you leave a comment, do five or more words. There's a magic to that formula. If you post, if Sherry were to post something and I say great article, the LinkedIn algorithm is kind of rating the popularity of, of Sherry's post. And if it says great article, LinkedIn's like, nah, not a lot of effort there. We're not going to give it a high score. But if I reply to that and I say, great article, Sherry, this reminds me of that team building exercise we did back in 2007, where we blah, blah, blah. Do you remember that? And it's a lengthy response, five more words. LinkedIn's like, ooh, this is interesting. People are talking about it. And then Sherry responds back to me. Now we've got a conversation thread going back and forth. LinkedIn's going to say, oh, people are talking about this. We want to show this post to more people. So ultimately, the post that you see in your homepage feed it's basically a popularity contest in, in content that's geared towards you. So if you interact with my content, LinkedIn says, oh, you're interested in Brenda's content. We're going to show her to you more often. And the other thing is LinkedIn wants you to keep on LinkedIn and stay on the site longer. So they're not going to show you posts that aren't getting a lot of engagement. They're going to show you posts that are getting a lot of engagement because those are the interesting posts that are going to kind of bring you in, right? So think about um, you know, starting on your homepage feed, liking a couple things, adding a comment of five or more words, 
Um, when you do post and people comment back, I like to think about a comment as a gift, and that's a gift that you've given me. So what do we do when we get a gift? We acknowledge that, right? We say thank you, we send a thank you note, or we do some type of acknowledgement. And we want to do that when people are commenting on our posts as well. So here's what I want you to do. Think about today you are at this amazing HR conference. There's a lot of amazing speakers you're going to be seeing throughout the day. Get comfortable. I'm giving you permission. Get comfortable with your phones. Take pictures of the speakers throughout the day today. Whether you feel comfortable posting a picture of me or not, and I get it. We're in a session about LinkedIn and careers. I get that you may not want to share mine, but if, there, if you do feel comfortable, if you take a picture of me and you share that out on LinkedIn, what you could, day, could say is something like, attended the Detroit Sherm Conference today and learned LinkedIn strategies to help um, expand our personal brand for company name that you're working for, okay? So we're kind of going stealth, we're throwing them off the chase, right? You guys know what I'm doing here, right? But we're getting visibility for ourselves while we're doing that, okay? There is a conference hashtag, so if you do post today, I would encourage you to use the conference hashtag. That helps other people to see your post and expand the content to other people that are using this as well. So speakers in general, we have large networks. So when you take pictures of speakers, when you're at events, when you tag them, it, you get the visibility of, of their network seeing your name. Okay, so I've got about 20,000 followers. When you tag me, you're gonna get a lot of people looking at your post. And I will comment back, and I will thank you for the post, and I might ask you a question to keep the conversation going a little bit more here, right? I'm not gonna ask you, like, you know, tell me the theory of what relativity is going well there. I'm gonna, I'm gonna ask just a soft type of question. It might be, what was one key takeaway you learned today? Or did you connect with your neighbor? Something like that. And I'm just gonna get some conversation going back and forth, okay? So again, you have your phone with you, take a picture, whether it's me or the other, speakers today, what I do is I might take maybe five to ten pictures of every speaker because I'm going to get that one person who takes a you know, weird <laughs> pose where I'm laughing or things to the side. And that's, the, you know, that's what I would do. At the end of the day, I might take five pictures and I might say, today I attended the Detroit Sherm Conference and heard from at Brenda Muller, at Sherry Canyon, at Maggie Walsh. You guys aren't speaking, but I'm just giving shout outs right now. Um, and tag the speakers, and then you get some additional visibility for yourself for attending industry conferences. And um, an event like today, you know, has great visibility. So, but you say, you know, Brenda, you told me I should post once a week on LinkedIn, and, and really I should be working it up to daily. But Brenda, I don't know what to post. Voila! But Brenda, I don't know what to post. I have some ideas for you. So anytime you're at conferences, workshops, even attending webinars, you can do screen captures on your phone of, of those webinars. Take a photo, tag the presenter, and share that out on LinkedIn. Today I am attending XYZ conference and I'm learning strategies for talent recruitment, whatever. Use the hashtags when they have them. This, this right here, guys, this is a photo you want to keep in your phone. And go ahead and take a picture of it. Um, this is one of these things when you're going to be like, I know she said I should post, I haven't posted in three months, what should I post? You're going to want to look back at this, and um, this is a really helpful kind of tool to guide you through. Share industry news items. So as you're reading HR publications, industry publications, whatever, a lot of times they have that click to share button. That's easy. I mean, we're reading articles and e-news and stuff all the time. That's a really easy thing to do. Share your company page posts or job postings or press releases. That's a really great way if you're in stealth mode, you don't want your employer to know. You want to be a great brand ambassador and share the company news. Makes you look like a great brand ambassador, your competitors think you're a great brand ambassador, maybe they want to hire you over here, right? So think about sharing those. Um, inspirational quotes and images. Anybody else an inspirational junkie here in the room? Just me? Okay, we got a couple. Where's the color roller moving around over here? So inspirational quotes are really great. Um, on LinkedIn, they work really, really well. If um, you're like me and you want to be lazy about this, what I would do is do a Google image search, inspirational quotes about, I'll let you ladies fight over who gets it first. <laughs> inspirational quotes about leadership, inspirational quotes about teamwork, whatever. Find a Google image. A lot of times nowadays they have the watermark in there with the company name so you don't need to worry about licensing. And share those out on LinkedIn. Those do really, really well. Okay. And I think about, I make a couple days of the week really easy for me. I have a little thought that needs to go into them. Every Friday, I do a Friday shout. So I pick somebody in my network that I've had an interaction with recently or that's touched me at some point throughout my career that's really helped me, and I talk about them. So today's Friday shout is, and I talk about that person and how I know them. 
This is not about me. It's not selling my LinkedIn training, coaching services. This is talking about other people. It makes that other person feel really good. He's going to comment. His network's going to see it. We're going to get conversations going back and forth, and it drives profile views. Okay? So that's just one example of that. Detroit Sherm, if you guys are not already following this page, go and follow this page. Look this up right now. Detroit Sherm has a page on LinkedIn. If you're struggling with content, you can share their posts out. When you're on the page, you just scroll down, and right underneath each of the posts, there's a like, a comment, and a share. I would say do all three. That's going to help them out. Anybody from the Detroit Sherm board in the room? Yeah. You guys, would you guys appreciate that? Yeah. If people would go out on your page, yeah. like it, comment, <laughs> share it. And to, there's today's event on there. You have a holiday networking event that's coming on here as well. So you might share it out. Especially if you're attending, you might say, hey, I'm going to be at the holiday event. And he'll be there as well. You know, let, let's, let's meet in person, that type of thing. All right, and to kind of finish us off here, I'm going to share with you guys this technique. And um, this is a technique for sharing content on LinkedIn. And I guarantee that when you learn this technique, you will never post the same way ever again. Okay, so NEVA is my acronym. N stands for news. And I think about why do they care about this? Remember the Wall Street Journal example? I'm only going to pick up and read it if it is interesting to me, the reader. Okay? The N is news. The E is engage. We engage by tagging people and or organizations. Okay? The V is a visual. So the visual might be a photograph, it might be an infographic, a video, but something visual that goes along with it, not just text. And the A is a call to action. What do you want them to do next based on reading that post? So I'm going to show you just an example. This is one of my Friday shouts, and this is actually somebody who does the same thing I do. She does LinkedIn coaching and training. I have the abundance mentality. I'm not a scarcity mentality. The more people I connect with that do similar things to me, the more we can help each other. That's my philosophy. So I, I do some Friday shouts of, of other weekly trainers and coaches. And the news here was today's Friday shout. That was the feature. Okay? The E was I engaged by tagging Shelly. I also use the hashtag Friday shout. Other people are talking about that. The V was a visual. And I'm lazy, you guys. I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time graphic designing. I did a screen capture and cropped it. That's what I did. So that's the visual. And then the A was the call to action. And the call to action here was visit Shelly's profile and invite her to connect and tell her Brenda sent you. So I'm telling people what I want them to do with that post. So the NEVA technique is something I do not every single day, but with a lot of my posts. And you can see here, this post, I think it got, what was it, about 3,400 views, 42 likes, 46 comments. So these do really well in terms of engagement. Now keep in mind, I comment back every time someone comments. So it's probably only 23 comments, but then it was 23 of me going back and responding to them. All right, so you guys are amazing because you have learned some really great techniques that are going to help you leverage LinkedIn throughout your HR career. You learned how to optimize your LinkedIn profile. We practice building strategic connections by including that personal note in there. We learned a couple of stealth mode tips, and I've got plenty more. If you want more tips, let me know. I can send them your way. We have created social media karma if we are paying it forward, we're talking about other people, we're giving other people LinkedIn recommendations. And you've also learned my little secret of never posting the same way on LinkedIn ever again. <laughs> and I, I love, this is one of my inspirational quotes. Remember I said I'm an inspirational junkie? So this is one of my quotes, you know? And you guys probably came in the room because you wanted to learn how to use LinkedIn differently. You will not change that unless you start incorporating some of these techniques. If you want something you've never had, you have to do something you've never done. So some of these techniques, they might feel a little uncomfortable, a little bit outside of your comfort zone, but that's what I'm here for, to push you through, to help you build your personal brand throughout your career. All right, guys, that's all I have for you today. Do we have a couple minutes for questions? I think we're at time right now. What do you think? Who's my, who's my have, timekeeper, gatekeeper? We have, a, we have like two or three minutes. Two or three minutes? Mm -hmm. Okay. Any questions from the audience here today? Yes. Yep, that's you. Great. Okay. Yep. I have a question. Like, uh, when you try to see who's view your profile, yep. um, LinkedIn wants you to upgrade and do pre-